An SSD is one of the options you have for the storage drive in your PC. It stands for solid state drive and due to the way it accesses data, an SSD is able to read and write data much faster than a mechanical hard drive or HDD as you may have heard it referred to. As SSDs access data much faster, this in turn improves your computer's overall performance, including things like your operating system, games, images and music, with nearly instant boot and load times because they don't have to mechanically seek out data on spinning platters like a HDD does. In this buyer's guide, we'll run through the different kinds of SSDs you can get and what you need to consider when buying your next one. Solid state drives these days come in several different form factors and operate across several possible hardware and software connections. What kind of drive you need depends on what device you have or are intending on buying. If you own a recent gaming desktop or you're building a PC with a recent mid to high end motherboard, your system may be able to incorporate most or all modern types of drives. So let's start by taking a look at the different connection types for internal SSDs. SATA 3 is the oldest and most commonly used connection for an SSD. It connects via a cable from your SSD directly to your motherboard and has a potential for transfers of 600 megabytes per second. Next up, you have the M.2 connection. This doesn't have a cable and instead, compatible SSDs are connected directly. The M.2 slot itself can then support either SATA 3 or the newer PCIe Express bus. It's important to check which ones your particular motherboard supports. The SATA 3 bus is still limited to 600 megabytes per second, while the PCIe 3.0 bus can support up to 3,900 megabytes per second at full time speeds. Recently, PCIe 4.0 has also come to market and doubles the speed of Gen 3. To get the highest SSD speeds, you'll need to use one of the latest NVMe SSDs. These are available as either PCIe 3.0 or PCIe 4.0. And lastly, there's the actual PCIe slot on your motherboard. This is a multi-use connection, and generally it's used for graphics cards, Wi-Fi adapters, network cards, and loads of other things. But it can also be used for an SSD via an adapter card. Depending on your system, it offers up to 16 lanes of bandwidth in either PCIe 3 or PCIe 4. This is theoretically the fastest option available, but as it's generally used for other things, it's not always available for SSDs. It's worth noting here that while NVMe SSDs are the fastest available, they only hit their peak speeds for sequential reads or writes, like copying a large video file, for example. This makes them great for content creators. However, if you're a gamer, then NVMe doesn't generally make a huge difference, with game loading times maybe only a few seconds making up the difference. One other thing to add is that everything so far has been theoretical speeds, and these don't always tell the whole story. Different qualities of SSDs will of course perform differently, and by this we mean that manufacturers will have multiple models within their product stack giving you a choice between price and performance, with only the very top end models being able to get the fastest speeds. Cheaply produced SSDs can sometimes perform very badly, so it's always a good idea to stick with a brand that you know and that also has some good reviews. And although not generally the case, it is possible that a good quality SATA SSD could perform just as well as a poor quality NVMe SSD in some circumstances. So let's take a look at what could affect performance. High-end SSDs tend to have a cache of DRAM that's extremely fast, allowing a huge speed bump for smaller write operations. If you're copying a larger file, then you'd see the speed start very high, and when the cache is full, you'll see the speed drop down to a sustained level. This way, for general operation, you get super fast speeds. It's always worth finding out what a drive's sustained write speed is though, as sometimes cheaper drives can give on-paper speeds similar to a high-end drive, but can only do it for very short amounts of time before their cache is full. In some cases, it would be better to have a higher quality SSD that can sustain more throughput for longer. And not all high-end SSDs have or need cache memory, so the only way to really tell how a drive will perform is with some real-world testing. 
Speed and capacity can be linked. There are three things that affect the speed of an SSD. Number one, the read-write speed the individual memory chips can sustain. Number two, how many of the chips there are working together. And number three, the controller that's used to manage them. Different brands have different SSD controllers which determine the overall performance for a given task. In the past, most brands use a third-party controller like Physion. But in the last few years, many brands have designed their own custom controllers. So performance for different tasks can vary by brand depending on the market they're trying to sell to. If two SSDs use the same controller, then the next thing that could affect performance would be the memory chips. On paper, speeds can seem similar between different capacity SSDs, as this is generally driven by the cache memory for those short bursts. But often the sustained throughput speed is higher on higher capacity drives as they have more memory chips working together to keep that sustained speed. When choosing an SSD, generally a 1TB version will have a significantly higher sustained throughput than a 500GB model, as the 1TB would be effectively made up of two of the 500GB models. This isn't always the case though, so again it's worth looking at the sustained throughput of the actual drive you're looking at, not an alternative higher capacity model. Unlike other components that may have loads of different features that don't affect performance but you may choose as a personal preference, there's not a huge amount beyond basic internal specifications when you're choosing between SSDs, but you may want to consider these options. Firstly, heat sinks. You'll find that some SSDs might feature a heat sink to aid with cooling. It's generally a feature that can be found on NVMe drives as they can get hot under sustained load, which can lead to performance throttling but it's important to check your motherboard for compatibility as some now feature their own cooling solutions which may not allow for an external heatsink. Many of the big brands are turning to software suites to offer something different to users. These can range from simple tools to make it easier to transfer your data right through to professional backup solutions, so it's worth noting if you get anything extra with your SSD which may be of use to you. And last but not least, lighting. Yes, it's a thing. You'll find that some SSDs have RGB on them purely for aesthetic purposes so you can match to the rest of your peripherals or just enjoy a cool light show. Contrary to popular belief though, it doesn't make them any faster. So here's just a few pointers that should help narrowing down your option of SSDs a little easier. You can shop a wide range at scan.co.uk and if you need any more help, you can of course get in touch with our helpful team here at Scan. We've also produced a hot sellers video so you can see what options have been popular with others and the link is below. Please make sure you like this video if you found it helpful and let us know which SSD you opted for and why. And subscribe for other helpful videos. Oh,